So I'm gonna make another video on this bullet feeder. I made one the other day, but it was mainly just a, a post for Facebook for a different group. So I had a lot of questions. I decided to make a little video on it. Talk about different motor mount and transfer tubes that you could use, as well as different drop tube and drop tube adapters for the different bullet feeding dies. Now you can find these on Thingiverse. I'll put the link below. This is made by a guy named Ammo Mike, or is designed by a guy named Ammo Mike. And they're really easy to print. I'll put in some pictures of an Ender 3. It's a $180 3D printer. But it's printing a red one for my Loadmaster. But this one, instead of buying the, you know, three or four different types of film in different colors, I went ahead and purchased this from a guy named Carl Bibbs. Now Carl Bibbs runs a Facebook group called Carl Bibbs Reloading Stuff. He actually sells these. They're like 60 bucks for the plastic. You can get them fully set up. I think it's like 190 but I mean, it's got the bullet feeding die and everything you want. But just for the plastic, if you want to get your own tube and die and all that, it's like 60 bucks. This is the mounting bracket for the Dylan case feeder, but there's tons of different pole mounts and all that. There's electrical boxes where you can hide the wiring. So like right now, I just made it a little wiring harness and I covered it with this wire loom. Now another thing about the wire loom is a transfer spring. You can use the half inch corrugated tube. This is, this is for covering wires just like that. Home Depot sells are for like two bucks. You can get a pack with the three eighths that I use to cover my wiring and a half inch. So you use the half inch for the drop tube. This is for nine millimeter, stuff like that. You know, it's a real nice transfer spring. They sell the different adapters right up here, so it snaps in. The spring's 12 bucks, but shipping is $7. So I didn't want to spend $7 shipping, but I went ahead and ordered a DAA bullet feeding die, as well as a DAA powder funnel. And I'll explain why I got the DAA powder funnel here in a minute. But you don't have to use this. This is a $50 die, the DAA bullet feeder die. But you can use the RCBS or the Hornady and you can find them for around 20, 30 bucks. Then your drop tube right here holds your switch. There's another important factor is this switch is a low mass. This is a 0.29 Newton in order to activate that switch. I'll put a link below where you can find that. They're actually pretty hard to find low mass switches like this. Even at 0.29, it's still too stiff. It takes two to three bullets to trigger that. We really need a 0 .06, which is going to be almost impossible to find on a budget. These are like three or four bucks. It'd be compared to thirty, forty dollars and up for a switch that was that precise, if it even worked. They also have different drop tubes for an optical sensor. You wire it in the same way. You just run your wiring switch. I'm just running a little quick connector. I do plan on running these wires different when I get my speed controller. Carl Bibbs actually makes a speed controller that mounts in right here is all these screw holes and mounting holes, they're offset on the inside for your nuts, your bolts, everything. The 3D printer does it all. And also get it from Carl Bibbs, you know, you don't have to source these screws and everything from elsewhere. It's all supplied whenever you order it from him. And he actually has permission from the designer, Ammo Mikes, to sell them. He's just a little small side business veteran. He makes lots of 3D printed parts. Like, you can do tons of stuff with 3D printers. Like these little primer tube clips, you know, primer stops, case stops. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. Now, for the bullet feeder, if you're running on a Dillon, you don't have to get the DAA funnel. It's a $40 funnel, and I'm really not happy with it. So now the stock Dillon funnel, all it does is flare the mouth of the case, which you can use it, but it takes a really long time to get it set in, and I was getting brass shavings everywhere, like horrible brass shavings. I think I still have a picture I'll post in here. Horrible brass shavings, big slivers. So I went with the DAA funnel. The reason I went with the DAA is to eliminate that because it actually has a step down. It actually steps your entire case out as well as flaring. It bells out the mouth of the case. But I was getting some horrible sticking. This is why I'm not happy with a $40 die. All of this area here on the DAA powder funnel, I posted on Facebook. It was sticking real bad. I was lubing my cases. It was sticking just really horrible, jerking the press around. And everybody talked about you have to sand it or you have to get a polishing compound and a Dremel, which I ended up did and it went away. You just mirror polish that whole thing. It works really good now, but for a $40 powder funnel, that's ridiculous. You have to do that. 
Sorry, that is a little sore spot for me that they're going to charge that much for a powder funnel and you have to finish it yourself. Then here the bullet feeder. You'll notice this is your drop tube. These are caliber specific as well as your shell plate. Now this 10 millimeter opening is what I'm using for 9 millimeter. You probably use different calibers in it, but this is what you need for 9 millimeters, the 10 millimeter opening. You're going to hold your limit switches in here. They have large and small, depending on how wide your limit switch is. And they also have optical sensors if you want to run a light sensor to stop it. But these switches are really like. Now, like I said earlier, 0.29 Newton. It takes a few bullets to trigger it. But that's fine because now you have, you know, four to five bullets inside your die, as well as another three or four inside your drop tube. So you always have a steady supply of bullets. Now, if you're printing this yourself on Thingiverse, you're going to find a lot of caliber specific parts like the drop tube I just showed you, as well as the flipping plate. The flipping plate is going to be for multiple calibers, but for instance on 9mm it takes this two-sided. The bullets will start to turn on this plate and then take this ramp and flip all the way over. Now obviously your collar plate is going to be caliber specific. And what I really like about the Carl Bibbs is right here, that oval plastic piece they actually designed that to cover up the motor shaft. Because normally you'd find some type of D-shaft or a pin or something in there to actually turn that collar plate. He actually has this set screw with that oval. Actually makes it look a lot nicer. Again, if you're not purchasing from Carl Bibbs, or if you're purchasing from him and you want to get your own motor, there's tons of different motor layouts and they actually have the holes ready to mount. All the different motors, your nuts, your bolts, whatever you need for that type of motor. This is a 370 worm gear. Really good high torque. It's a 10 RPM motor. I planned up there was this electrical panel box. This is just to hide the wiring. But now I'm definitely going to get the speed controller box and it'll hold wiring inside of it as well. Now as far as this adapter. This one is set up for the DAA tube. But it wasn't hard at all to get this corrugated pipe to go in there. And they sell tons of different things for here. You just have to look on Thingiverse. But honestly this is my favorite setup with the DAA spring. I love the spring and die. Don't really like the prices, but I was not happy with their funnel. Once you rework it, it works really good though. So, if you're still with me, let's do some loading. I know I've been blabbing a lot, but there's a lot of parts to cover, stuff you need. So if you're looking into this yourself and you have any questions, please hit a comment down below. I built tons of do-it-yourself bullet feeders and case feeders, so I have a lot of experience with the switches and motors and stuff like that that you need. So if you have any questions, definitely just shoot a comment down below and I'll help you work through it. One thing before we start loading the power supply, this is a 1 amp power supply, it's a Rockbirds. You see, you'll find these on a, a 2 pack on Amazon. You can, there's tons of you know, AC adapters like this. This is just a 1 amp adapter. You can also get these Rockbirds or other brand power supplies that actually come with these quick connectors. They got, you just put the wiring in them, you got two screws. There's tons of different styles and sizes of these flush mounts where they can hide inside the electrical box. And, a lot of good stuff. On Amazon, they actually have a power supply that has these with them. Now, speaking of power supplies, I know I said it was getting ready to load, so I apologize for this. This is the 370 Worm Gear. If you get the Chances motor, the Chances motor is a synchronous motor. What a synchronous motor does, once it, once it gets so much force on it, which you actually have to find out how much force that one holds, but once it gets enough force, it spins in reverse. The synchronous motor uses a at least 3 amp 12 volt AC adapter. So make sure you get a 12 volt AC adapter that's at least 3 amps. And I've seen some people talk about their motor won't work on less than 5 amps. To get up in that 5 and 10 amp range, these little power supplies aren't going to cut it. You're actually going to have to get a laptop power supply, cut the wires yourself. Now although I really do like the Chances motors, their synchronous motor, their it's sort of like a disc, looks like a hockey puck. They're good motors if they wired them right. I'll put in some pictures below of one I got that wasn't. I actually had to re spool it myself. It's a lot of work, it's pretty dangerous. If you got anything crossed in there, it's gonna burn up. Worm gear motors, they don't run on electromagnetic force, you know. These worm gear motors, there isn't any little plastic gears inside. There's no spooling wire that makes the disc spin.
taste it in advance. 